Went to see Ezra Pound when I was 18, when I was in college. He was in the psycho ward at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, which was the way his defense lawyer had saved him from being shot for treason, uh, for the things he'd said during World War II. The plea of insanity, they, they said that he was crazy. He probably was a little crazy. Um, I knew nothing about his politics, fortunately. And, and he, uh, to my amazement now, took me seriously as a poet. He decided this is a young man who says he wants to be a poet, and he, 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 he accepted that. And he said, if you want to be a poet, you have to take it seriously. You have to work on it the way you would work on anything else, and you have to do it every day. He said, you should write about 75 lines a day. You know, Pound was a great one for laying down the law about what, how, how you did anything. And he, said, and he said, and you don't have anything to write 75 lines about a day. Or he said, you don't, have, you don't really have anything to write about. Uh, he said, at, at the age of 18, you think you do, but you don't. And he said, the way to do it is to learn a language and translate. And he said, that way you can practice and you can, you can find out what you can do with your language, with your language. He said, you can learn a foreign language, but you the translation is your way of learning your own language. This is a poem that I wrote about 20 years ago, one of a series of poems, uh, as it turned out, that had to do with family relations and it's called Yesterday. My friend says, I was not a good son, you understand. I say, yes, I understand. He says, I did not go to see my parents very often, you know. And I say, yes, I know. Even when I was living in the same city, he says, maybe I would go there once a month or maybe even less. I say, oh, yes. He says, the last time I went to see my father, I say, the last time I saw my father, he says, the last time I saw my father, he was asking me about my life, how I was making out, and he went into the next room to get something to give me. Oh, I say, feeling again the cold of my father's hand the last time. He says, and my father turned in the doorway and saw me look at my wristwatch, and he said, you know, I would like you to stay and talk with me. Oh, yes, I say. But if you are busy, he said, I don't want you to feel that you have to just because I'm here. I say nothing. He says, my father said, maybe you have important work you are doing, or maybe you should be seeing somebody. I don't want to keep you. I look out the window. My friend is older than I am. He says, and I told my father it was so. And I got up and left him then, you know. Though there was nowhere I had to go. And nothing I had to do.